Hello guys, welcome back. So in the video this morning, um, I told you about the vision um, uh, for creating the IoT simulation toolkit. Um, that was still a work in progress and it still is work in progress, but uh, now you can um, actually see the sensor nodes um, generating data, collecting data and offloading data uh, based on a default um, um, uh, error characteristics. So um, what I have done in the meantime is I have uh, tried to implement different um, connection model for the sensor node to offload the data. Um, so they all basically um, uh, extend uh, this class uh, which is called IoT connection um, and it basically uh, has uh, two methods one is to initialize the connection and the second one is to send the message uh, using this um, connection object um, what I have implemented um, is I have implemented a, a RabbitMQ uh, connector which extends IoT connection and basically um, configures the the sensor node uh, to offload the data uh, to uh, a rabbit mq which is supposedly um, uh, hosted on the the mobile uh, collection uh, connection agent uh, which has the wi-fi hotspot uh, on top so let me quickly uh, demonstrate um, to you uh, some of the additional features that i have implemented since this morning one other, one other thing which i wanted to uh, let you know is the um, the sensor node um, um, behavior? So for the moment, um, uh, it actually you know uses an implicit error model. So if the node itself is um, in the yellow um, uh, state, uh, then the error rate is 20%, uh, meaning that there is a 20% likelihood of data transmission to fail. Uh, and if it is in the green um, zone, um, then the error rate is uh, one percent. Um, when the simulation tool starts and the sensors are deployed, it is assumed that the sensor starts collecting data from that from that point onward, uh, based on the configured uh, periodicity of the data collection for each uh, deployed node. Um, which uh, for this demonstration is is set to one and a half seconds here, which is this this value. All of this will be uh, you know uh, refactored so that it becomes uh, extendable and and easy to parameterize uh, when we um, uh, release this code in in open source. Uh, but for the moment, uh, just for the sake of having the features uh, built into the toolkit in the least possible time frame, um, I have uh, hard coded some of the values. Um, so let's um, start the demo and see how the um, the behavior uh, goes. So um, I'm going to minimize this video, uh, this uh, this window, code window, and um, what you will see um, is that uh, I don't have uh, any RabbitMQ um, server running. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, uh, a RabbitMQ. Um, service in a container so that's done um, just to test if my RabbitMQ service is up and running um, uh, maybe I should just give it a few seconds yes it's there and you see that there is no uh, queues uh, there it's a completely empty uh, messaging system which is up and running um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also start um, uh, a process which basically um, takes all the queued messages from the RabbitMQ system just to show you the data which comes into the queue. So um, I'm going to uh, start uh, a code which I wrote earlier um, which um, uh, basically spawns processes and uh, and the pro each, each process basically takes the message out of the queue and displays it on the, sc on the screen, nothing fancy. So um, now this uh, process um, actually starts listening on a on a queue which is called Cyclops test, and this is the same queue which is configured in the in the uh, data uh, in the sensor node um, configuration, so that that's the endpoint where it sends the message. So let me um, um, start the 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 IoT 
uh, toolkit. Um, so this is the toolkit. Um, and um, what I will do is I will simply slide this um, window so that you can see some of the key parameters of the uh, messaging system that I'm using. Um, and let's uh, maximize the the area over which you will see the, the, the messages. So the message should appear here. So um, as I said, the the toolkit when it is uh, executed, uh, the the sensor node already starts generating or, or basically collecting data, and it is storing each collected data into a, a scratch memory, which is built into the um, uh, the, the sensor. Um, what happens is when I move my collection uh, vehicle uh, closer to a node, and if the node comes into the the, the Wi-Fi uh, hotspot uh, coverage area, whatever queued messages uh, are there in that sensor node, it will immediately start to offload all of those uh, into the um, this this mobile uh, hotspot. And um, if the hotspot still continues to be in the vicinity of the sensor node after it has offloaded all the queued messages uh, within itself, then you would see that the sensor node basically then, uh, as and when it generates the next sample, it, it sends that sample into the, uh, the hotspot. So let me uh, just bring this hotspot to this um, uh, sensor node which is closest to it. And you see it already had some queued messages uh, which it sent to the uh, hotspot um, uh, using the, the error probability model which is hard coded in the code right now. And after all the messages have been uh, sent to the hotspot, it then uh, sends uh, at a predefined uh, frequency which is also hard coded in the code for the moment. As you can see, there are some messages which are being lost because it is in the yellow region which has uh, a higher uh, failure uh, rate in transmission. Let me bring this closer so that it's green and, and hopefully you should see less um, messages which are in error. Um, so uh, that's the, the the outcome here. Now um, and you will see here also that the um, the queue is fairly empty because uh, my process is, is basically consuming all the messages in the queue. Uh, the thing of interest is uh, the message rate, um, so it's uh, 0 0.6 uh, uh, per second. So let me move my vehicle uh, to other sensor node. Uh, so it has some queued messages, so you will see a jump in all the the messages which, which are dumped. So you, you can see uh, that the publish rate, uh, you know, jumped up significantly, but after uh, all the messages have been offloaded, there are no more queued messages, and then the sensor node is sending data at the pre-configured uh, frequency with which it is collecting data. So uh, if I move it out, um, uh, what happens is that the sensor node uh, transmission is deactivated. And so all the new data samples which are being collected are now stored in the sensor node itself. Uh, it cannot offload to the, uh, to the collection agent. Um, but when the nec when, whenever next time the collection agent is back into its vicinity, it would offload all the queued messages at once and you would see this, the, the previous behavior again. So whatever was the queued uh, sample set, it was offloaded, and again, it goes back into the, 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 the normal state of data uh, collection and data transmission. Now, you know, as in when I move this vehicle now through rest of the sensor nodes, you will, you will see basically the same, um, same behavior. Whenever a node comes into the vicinity, it will offload all of the queued data at once. Um, after that, if the ve vehicle is still in the vicinity, then it would do it in a in a in a predefined rate. Uh, so let's just see how uh, how that happens. So I'm just going to randomly move my vehicle here and there, and you will see a lot of uh, spurt in in the uh, message rate which is being uh, published into the RabbitMQ. Um, and now let's pause uh, for a second. All the queued messages would be consumed by the RabbitMQ uh, worker, which is in the central um, uh, data processing facility somewhere. Um, and if I repeat the process, um, uh, the same behavior will will contain uh, will continue. So 
this is this is what I have been able to to achieve um, uh, since this morning. Um, the code still uses um, some uh, values which are hard coded, which I will uh, remove uh, and bring them into either configuration file, which you could configure um, along with uh, uh, an extendable um, class where you can define your error model and, and data generation and data uh, collection uh, behavior from a sensor node. Also, uh, for the moment, um, the 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 connection class only has support for RabbitMQ uh, collectors or basically RabbitMQ endpoints, which I will extend and add uh, things like uh, datagram um, uh, servers or uh, socket-based uh, uh, endpoints, so that you have uh, a variety of uh, connection uh, types to choose when you run your simulation. So um, that's all um, for the moment uh, from my side. Uh, please stay tuned. This code is still not ready, um, uh, but I hope to release it very, very soon in open source. Thanks for listening and have a nice day.